Welcome to a video showing my journey from being outside of the top 250,000 worldwide to being able to get within the top 10 worldwide. What I just said is pretty relative. I was rarely ever out of the top 250,000 in the world and I'm rarely in the top 10 in the world. But Anyway, to start off, to not spoil anything, I'll start start with the drifting aspect, but I won't focus too much on that because drifting's kind of sort of non-existent in sport, and this will ultimately lead to how good I'm doing in sport. But that's where I'll start. So anyway, to begin with, what I'm using originally is mygrandturismo.net, which is still around you can still log in and stuff but this is basically just the old version of kudos prime if you want the updated stuff go to the kudos prime side of it but my grand net actually still has grand turismo 5 stats for as far as i know every time trial and drift trial so again i'll start with how i started way back when in drift trials as i've said in previous videos gt5 wasn't where i started playing grand turismo by the time I started playing GT5, I wasn't downright terrible, but I was far, far, far from being the best. I'm still not all that close to being the best. But anyway, as you all can see here, I didn't start drifting immediately just because I really had no need or want to. I didn't really understand drifting all that much 2010, 2011, and honestly, I wasn't very good at it, and I didn't know what I was doing, like, at all. I didn't even realize manual transmission was definitely a need with drifting. Like, it helps with racing, but it's down at a need with drifting. And, yeah, I was straight up bad with drifting for a long time. The first actual doing better than average in a drift trail came all the way in the 51st running of a drift trail. And they come every two weeks, so that would have been half a year after GT5 was out, was before I could even drift averagely for once. And as you can see with total rankings, not that many people drifted compared to the actual time trials, but take that as you may, and especially take this as you may. Again, 51 was the first time I was ever in the top half. My 54 was when I figured out the front wheel drive. Drift glitz, and as I said in many another video, that's what sort of sparked my confidence to go ahead and try improving in time trials as well. Because as y'all saw here, I was pretty terrible in drift trials until I figured out an exploit. It was a perfectly legal exploit and it lasted to the very end of GT6 online even. So I figured I might as well go ahead and try something with time trials to see if I can find an exploit or just really anything to do better than that as well given that I could in drift trials something that at one point I was actually worse in so anyway the rest is history with that I got actually pretty good at drifting and no I didn't just drift the front wheel drive cars 
I drifted them a lot, but I mean, look, here's an example. It was 110th in the world one time with a Cabrera, which is rear wheel drive. For people who say I only drift the front wheel drive cars, I only drift them in a way that you see me on the leaderboards, but that doesn't mean I'm bad drifting the rear wheel drive cars. I'm not bad. I could do that back in 2013, so, eh. But anyway, this is probably more of what y'all are waiting for, because this is more relevant part. I just kind of had to do it drifting and then up, because that's the way this website is set up. So anyway, da -da -da -da, this is the beginning of when I actually started doing online time trials. The first one that I did was at Indianapolis Super Speedway, and by then it was already the 15th one. Again, I mean, I had somewhat interest in racing because I was playing a racing game, but I just straight up knew at that point I wasn't really good enough to be competitive, so therefore the first one I tried was with an oval. And honestly, back then I didn't have the correct cars yet either. But, on my very first try, I actually did manage to be about average, so... That's not bad. By the way, if y'all haven't figured it out yet, the numbers there are how good your average is to the max. Like if you're first, you're 999. If you're last, you're 001. So 545 is a little above average, and then that's the time, that's the track, that's how many people are in it, and that's the number of the trial. But anyway, continuing on, I was average-ish. I mean, I had one good run. And also, I want to point this out, too, is I still didn't actually know what I was doing back then, even though I just happened to be better racing than drifting. And I still didn't really realize what traction control did in all the ways. Like, I realized traction control helped with tracks, and I didn't know what number was best, or I kind of just went with five to begin with, because I knew that's what the game put it on, so I figured that was always going to be the best to use, because that's what they gave us. It's not, and it's still not, and GT Sport still forces traction control on every cockpit in time, but that's a different video. They haven't fixed that in eight years, but anyway, as y'all can see from this, I was slightly above average to begin with. Some was under, a few more was over, but I still didn't exactly know what I was doing, and honestly, the weird part is... This is still with traction control, this is without traction control, it didn't actually make a huge difference. I guess it was just learning curve to know how to run with little to no traction control, but that didn't really make a huge, huge difference. So far my best as an owl is about top 4th, top 25% so far. And it's still staying like that, but I would say my average is slightly going up at this time. And that right there I guess would be my new best for now. It's on a short track already pretty far into the game but again at this point i didn't even have an average drift trial yet and i was already in the top 80 percent for time trials and the car was slow once i was slow but could be kind of fast in slow cars now i am faster but i'm still fastest in slow cars if that makes any sense but this is proof of that I was the same back then as I am now in that aspect, I'm fastest in slow cars. But then pretty much after that I had enough confidence to know I could at least do decently. So well then I did, and that was actually perfect timing too. Because that was the start of GT Academy, I think it was 2011. Going by that I think it would make sense for it to be 2011. So that's when I started to be competitive, because that's when a lot of people did. Obviously, I knew I wasn't going to be a GT Academy driver, but when once the GT Academy started, I was in about the top 20% or so. And then there's the cars to prove it. GT Academy cars. The only individual section this site actually has for GT Academy is 2012, but for all intents and purposes, from what I can tell, that's definitely meaning that part was 2011. So, Circuit GT Academy 2011, when I put in my absolute effort, I'm about top 20, maybe 15% if I'm lucky. But then, at least at that point, I was pretty consistently above average to pretty good. Top 20% is fine, but actually I started getting gradually better. So, you can see there, that was top 3,000 or so. Again, short track. 
Eh, not that slow of a car. GSXs are kind of sort of slow, but not really. But nonetheless, they are sort of kind of cheater cars, so that probably helped a little bit too. But moving on. Gradually getting better, gradually getting better, gradually getting better. I'll go ahead and see this now. I don't have any, like, magical crazy runs in GT5. I'm not going to say what my overall best was yet, but I will say it ain't 29th. Like, I got 6. And then all these are green. I don't really know what that means. I thought at first it greened your best run at a particular track. But, I mean, there's two at Grand Valley, so I don't really know what the green means. But I don't think it's anything bad. The only really green is not meant to be bad. And as y'all can see there, at this point, I'm pretty consistently always in the top 20% or so, no matter the track and car combination. And that's cool, but I'm also never really crazily good either. I'm never really in the top 10% until I was. This, from what I can remember, is my best overall. Grand Turismo 5. Time trial, because I remember actually doing it. I remember I actually watched Doodle Monopoly's replay, and I think if I remember correctly, because GT5 still had this feature, I actually used his shared car with his tune on it, and was able to get almost top 100 in the world. So thanks to Doodle Monopoly TRL Doodle for my best time ever in GT5 time trials. <laughs> Not a bad person to copy. That worked out pretty good. I guess. So there you have it, folks. That actually came nearly to the end, and then, well, there was the end. If I remember correctly, the going out ceremony for GT5 was sexy Nurburgring. I need to find which one. I think it might have been that one. This was the one right before GT6 came out. Nurburgring 24 hour, and actually, I was almost in the top 20% there. In general, I'm pretty terrible at Nurburgring because I cannot run a consistent lap if my life depended on it. But it's such a big track with hours and hours of practice. I could at least get in the top 20%. So, I mean, there you have it, folks. That's my GT5 run. My best is one in the top 10% on average. It says top 20%, but I think by target, maybe that means by the time you're getting to the end, that's more your average. So, I would say my average was probably about top 30%, and it was obvious I got better, too. Just going through these fast, y'all can even see without focusing them too much. I went from slightly above average to closer to best in the world than the average, actually kind of, sort of, in a way, meaning above 75%. And what that ended up equaling out for the overall averages compared to the rest of the world with everything considered. As far as I can tell, this isn't my average event by event. This is my average like total. Meaning pretty much if you finish on average of about 80% in each, you're probably going to be higher than 80% in this because most people aren't 100% completely consistent at the best always. My average compared with everything was top... 17% in the world for time trial, and top 23% in the world for drift trial, for GT5. And those stats ended about 2014. As y'all could tell, for drift trial, I was on a pretty exponential up then. And honestly, to an extent, I kind of was with GT5 as well. It just wasn't as much. This site doesn't actually sell anything for GT6, but I'm pretty sure on this channel in general, I'm pretty well documented GT6. I have my best Grand Turismo 6 time trial run video on there where I was 29th. I have quite a few of my best GT6 drift trial runs. I have the one where I was 4th in 2015. I have actually, I think, even the one from GT5 where I was 9th, and that was 2013. So that kind of carries us more to now. To be honest, I don't have anything special to sell for now because I'm the site that sells the individual rankings in the daily races as well. So moving on. I'm just going to leave that one alone. This is just my overall for GT Sport. 
Hopefully it's only about a fault. Everyone's driver rating goes up. But realistically, this puts me in about the top 0.01-ish percent in the world for driver rating. I don't know the exact percent, but it's not bad. Even at my absolute best for GT5, I got to top 10%. To be exact, I think about top 7.5%. My average for GT Sport is probably, I mean, there's that, there's this. Y'all can make your own opinion on that average. Maybe top 0.5%, maybe? Something around there. So, that just goes to so that in eight years, I went from pretty bad at drifting to pretty good at drifting. I think that's fair to say. Quite a few top 10s in a glitchy way is kind of eh, but I mean, y'all saw proof there too that even back in GT5, I could sort of, sort of kind of drift some rear wheel drive cars decently. And I got from pretty average with racing to pretty good, I think that's fair to say as well, I guess. Depends on the person as well. If you're else you're watching this, um, I'm t much worse than you in every way, but. It depends on who's watching this, where I am, but y'all get the point. Relative to someone else, definitely you can improve. I was able to pretty much improve relative to everyone else. But no matter who it is, if you improve, you improve. It took me eight years to get from average to where I am now in time trials, and from lowest 20% to highest two in the world. I do have a video up of the one that I got second in the world in a drift trial. So, again, like I said at the beginning, y'all can take this how you may. This may not apply to y'all in the sense of getting from exactly where I was to exactly where I am. But really and truly, I do believe that anyone can improve at a great rate if you put your effort into it. Some skill may be involved, but I just, I don't feel it. I can tell my reflexes are just downright bad. But the only sports I was ever decent with was something like basketball, where you could just kind of get a rhythm. And I wasn't very good at defense, because that required good reflexes. Or I was good at, like, physical stuff that was just, like, push-ups or something, because that's also kind of a rhythm. So I'm far from physically gifted, I'm far from... Uh, reflexively gifted like reflexes but yet I still got to here so yeah I mean I can still do better I mean as y'all can see by the time I ended GT5 I wasn't necessarily bad but I got better I would say at this point I'm within about 10% as good as I'm ever going to get but I started 99% away, really. I know it kind of sort of looks like 50%, but think about it in the terms of like an exponential curve, like I've said before. I ain't a math major, but that pretty much just means even if you go from 50% of the way through on the horizontal axis, you're only like 10% of the way through on the vertical so, yeah, I've probably confused people at this point. I think I've even confused myself, but y'all hopefully get what I mean. So, just keep at it, keep practicing, and put in however much effort you think you need to get wherever you need to go. And, well, I was able to do it and can still sort of kind of do it, and now my internet's failing me, which is not surprised at all. But that doesn't mean I can't keep on trying to connect. It's just like y'all can't, just like y'all can keep on trying as well. So, if my internet improved as much as I did, it would be slightly better than it is today, but at least I improved in a decent way, again, compared to some. But, nonetheless, compared to someone out there, you can definitely improve, and you can always improve to yourself. And that's most definitely worth yeehaw now, and well, in the future, too, is that's the point. Yeehaw.
Not so much for my internet.